is a special day for Spurs Sports and Entertainment because they broke ground on their $510 million human performance campus located off Loop 1604 and I-10 near the shops at La Quintera and Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Spurs legend David Robinson, Precinct 3 Bear County Commissioner Trish DeBerry, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, Managing Partner for SSNE Peter J. Holt and SSNE CEO R.C. Buford and the Coyote, among others, were there with shovel in hand. And R.C. Buford, he is thrilled. What we're most excited about is what, what can happen for our community and the impact of the learnings that we can bring from a place to gather the community like we can here at The Rock. Uh, I just think that that's going to have a major impact across our, our communities, the region we live in, and ser the communities that we serve around the world. According to SSNE officials, the 504,000 square foot campus will include a collection of world class training facilities, cutting edge health care offices, community spaces, a 22 acre park, and an outdoor plaza. As for the Spurs, they will close out their three game road trip tonight at Minnesota at 7. Tomorrow afternoon, Canyon Volleyball will take the court at the Curtis Cobalt Center in Garland for the first time since 2015, looking for their first state title since 1983. Their first opponent is Grapevine, a team with experience at the state level. The Mustangs were 21 and 17 overall, but overcame a 5 and 12 start to the season in order to qualify for their second straight state semifinal appearance. Canyon is 43 and 8 this year, but they know they can't take Grapevine lightly. We know they have height. I they are kind of like dripping springs, so that kind of is, is going to be a uh, key for us. They're really scrappy, I feel like, and they have big hitters and they have a big block, so we're just going to have to be really smart and uh, hit shots and not just swing the ball every time. We've just been showing up to practice, um, coming super prepared. We know what we're um, going into this weekend, and we're um, super happy to be here, but we still have a lot more work to do. So we know this is our last week, but it's not done. We still have two more games to go win. The Cougarettes are also trying to snap another long streak. The program hasn't won a match at the state level since a semifinal victory in 2001. Canyon versus Grapevine is tomorrow at 1 p.m. in Garland. In Class 6A, the Brandeis Broncos are getting ready to face the Bridgeland Bears in the state semis. The first trip to state for the Broncos. At 45-2, and two, Brandeis is ranked fifth in the nation by Max Preps. The Broncos are very talented on the court and have a great support system in their parents. Very strong. Our parents are some characters. They're very wild, um, but I think their like personalities kind of shine through us, and um, it's I, it helps us a lot on the court. Our parents are amazing, amazing, um, and I think that that's what helps. You know, these kids are bought in, but you know, when they go home, that's important. Um, you know, it, it does affect the kids if the parents aren't, aren't bought in. No matter what game we go to, no matter how big, how small, that we're going to have so many supporters. And even though it is family, it doesn't matter. Just having that energy on the outside of the court, too, is just amazing. Brandeis will play Bridgeland this Friday in Garland, 5 p.m. in the Class 6A State Semifinals. Good luck to all those young ladies, man. That's a lot, that's a lot of good volleyball right there. It is indeed. All right, Larry. They make thank it you. look easy. Yep. All right. To fry or not to fry, that is the question. Ooh, that's a good question. That's, mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we're going to fry. How about <laughs> yes. smoking? Oh, yes. yes, okay. It is day four of our Thanksgiving prep week, and today it is all about the main event, the turkey. And we've got someone here who's going to make sure your turkey is a smoke show at your dinner. Adrian Davila, Davila's Barbecue. All right, and the whole secret is brining, right? Brining is where it's at. It's going to keep the turkey moist. Okay, but you got to have this big, you know, tank in your fridge. What if you don't have room for it? Well, you don't have room for it, just... Grab that, grab that cooler right there. I'm going to show you what to do exactly. I was going to say, because I don't have room, enough okay. room in my fridge. But everybody's got a in cooler. The cooler yes. And then you brine it in there. Yeah, so okay. what you're going to do is you have ice under there, and then you're going to add the hot liquid to it, and then it's going to cool it off without cooking any of it, which is important. But then um, it's going to impart all those wonderful flavors in there also. All right, more on that. Also, a different way to cook a turkey. You ever heard of spatchcocking? Yes, indeed. We're going to show you how to do that. It's a great way to do it. And oh my goodness, it is tasty. And then we're going to take a holiday ride on the Duseum Express and check out the new exhibit's five wondrous miniature lands. Our Gen Tobias Dresty is there. Yes, indeed. And big question. OK, when it comes to turkey, <laughs> all right, it's all carved up. Yeah. Is it? The white meat or the dark meat? Which do you prefer? Hmm. Let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. All that more in a few minutes.
We want to bring you some late breaking news before we go. Annette Rodriguez, the president and CEO of the Children's Shelter, will apparently resign from the organization. That information confirmed by multiple sources to the KSAT 12 defenders today. It's not clear when she's going to leave that position. The anticipated departure of Rodriguez, who led the nonprofit for this past decade, caps off a tumultuous year for the organization, though. In April, citing unacceptable conditions and ongoing capacity issues at the shelter's emergency shelter, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services officials issued a placement hold on the children's shelter. That hold required the shelter to remove all of the children in its care and then move them to foster homes or other shelters. And you can read more about this story right now on our website. Just go to KSET.com. Thanks so much for joining us for the News at Noon. So SA the, Live's getting ready to start. The question was white meat or dark meat? I like dark meat to cook the leftovers with, but I, with my meal, I like white, meat, like white with, meat with the gravy slobbered all over. So it depends on if I get to go through the line twice or just once. Oh, really? If it's once, I mix them. If it's twice, I get one, and then I go back the second time and get the other. So it's like getting two main courses. Exactly. <laughs> got to work that deal. All right. <laughs> Just like the FA Live people. I'm, were I'm frying this year. You're frying? But they're going to show us how to barbecue. It looked good, too. Here it is, right now, on SA Live. And today on SA Live, we give you multiple recipes for making your perfect Thanksgiving turkey, be it the white meat or the dark meat that you love this year. Plus, we take a holiday ride on the Museum Express to check out this new exhibit's five wondrous miniature lands. And we have Thanksgiving DIY ideas for your table settings from our dear friend, Creative Lifestyles, with Adina. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Can you believe it's only one week away until this guy is the star of the show? Until it is Turkey Day. That's almost hard to believe. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy one week from Thanksgiving Thursday. I'm Mike Osterhage. I know, right? And I'm Fiona Gorsuch. I can't believe it. It's going so fast. Fast, okay, and our Thanksgiving prep week continues here on day four. And today's theme, of course, is the classic Thanksgiving main dish, the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she likes Thanksgiving so well, is to make that noise. Okay, we're going to show you a few different ways to get your turkey, you know, just perfect. And one of them is with Adrian Davila from Davila's Barbecue and author of Cowboy Barbecue. Byron spoke from the original Texas Vaqueros. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. I'm good. Great. <laughs> Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. Okay. You are obviously known for the great smoked meat and smoked turkey. He's a smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. But no matter how you're cooking it, brining, right? That's how you got to start. You, you know, when it comes to the turkey, brining is where it's at. If you want to retain that moisture, and you know, be the star of the show with the turkey and not like bring the show down by having a dry turkey when the family comes over, mm -hmm. brine it and you will be a winner, guaranteed. All right, how would we get started here? What's in this pot? Besides All right, a lot so of oranges. at the restaurant and in the book, you're gonna have salt, pepper, and sugar okay. in the brine, pretty so straightforward. This goes in here. Uh, and we keep it simple because you know, cost and all of those things, but at home, you can do whatever you want. Absolutely. So here we added some oranges, some rosemary, some garlic, Get that going, and then you're just gonna dump that liquid into the cooler. All right. Where the turkey is. And there's ice on the bottom of this? Yeah, oh, so it. the ice on the bottom of the turkey is going to keep the turkey from cooking at all because that's not what you want to happen at this stage. Okay. So the ice will cool that liquid off. You'll just close that up. You'll add more ice to that eventually when all it right. melts. Four hours later, hopefully 24 hours later, you will have a bomb turkey. And that's a great way, I mean, if you don't have room in your fridge to brine yeah, your turkey, you know, right? At the restaurant, obviously that's not an issue, mm -hmm. but most people don't have no. that size of refrigerators at, at the house. So you use a cooler, likely you have a cooler. And, and again, the, the important thing is make sure you keep the temperature low enough, like, it, like it's in your refrigerator. Yes, okay. that's very, very important. Okay. You don't want that cooking, you don't want any of that, um, any of that taken away from the experience. You want to make sure you're, uh, safety's first. And of course, basting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you can baste with some rosemary, some of that butter, even put some of that garlic in there um, afterwards, you know, right before it goes to the table or during the cooking. That's going to help you keep that skin nice and crispy. Is that just melted butter? Because it, it's like, Isn't it smell a, amazing? it's got a syrupy cons yeah. consistency. Almost. Yeah, yeah, that melted butter, of course, it's gotten a little thicker now, now that we're at room temperature. Okay. But if you have it, you know, fully melted, or even if you want to add some oil to it, and again, any 
garlic or anything else, you know, just let it be you. But no. you can never have enough moisture, that's what I say. Now, do you want to do this at multiple times during the cooking process, like yes, before it goes in sure. the oven and then a few times you while You're going to start this about two thirds of the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you tint it at the end, even if you feel you've got enough smoke, you can bring it inside. Tint it, it put that glaze on there, and then just let it get, you really want to get to about 160 for a turkey. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, now the other thing too is because a lot of people are like, oh, my, the turkey's done. Quick, quick, make sure the stuffing's done and all that stuff. But once that's out of the oven, you got a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Once you got a while, you, once you're out of the oven, you can let it rest 30, 45 minutes. Cover it with foil. It's fine. Those bones in there, they'll radiate that heat. They keep the meat really, really hot. And again, you don't want to dry turkey, so you really want to avoid taking it to like 175, 180. Vale, that's too much. Okay, vale. Bring it down. Bring it down. <laughs> being yeah. very intricate with that. So, yes. you guys, who's a white meat, uh, white meat and dark meat? What do you guys prefer? I like? like white meat. I'll take dark meat. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. we have that's one that's easy. fully cooked over here. <laughs> All right. This has okay. been in the pit uh, for like four hours. And Ooh. at the restaurant, you can get this alone. Here, Fiona. Okay. You're going to get some stuffing. You get the turkey seat. alone for $44.95. <laughs> Or the stuffing, the gravy with that for sixty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. So you know you really don't want to want to cook and let us do the work. I promise you, we're there for you. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> if if that is if you want to get one of these turkeys, mm -hmm. how uh, how much time have, do you yeah. have to sure, order? Sure, you have until this weekend. Okay. You can either call the restaurant, you can DM us on social media. Or we'll even take the messages online through our website. And what size turkeys do you have? These are twelve to fourteen pounders. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. Know, yeah, and we're going there with we go. one size on the turkey, and that way, you know, don't make it too complicated. If you need more than one for a larger group, we're there for you. And of course, you've got a book out. Yes, I uh, released my book, uh, Cowboy Barbecue, which is focused around the foods from the area, you know, kind of like who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, my family, of course, with traditional barbecue, brisket, ribs, sausage, but then you have the vaquero style with the barbacoa on the ground. The lamb ribs and all of those things, you know, so then my mom's recipes are in there, my grandmother's recipes, so she just really speaks to who we are. Right. Mm. And you're located, of course, We are in Seguin, mm -hmm. 418 West Kingsbury. We've been there since 1959. You'll find us on our social, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're all over the place. And you always smell amazing. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> but we just, we just added the... You know, the, the oranges today and the Romeo. So, yeah, it's the smoke with a little more flair. A little citrus. As you said, yes. he is definitely a citrus. Citrus. Yeah. So. All right, for more information on Douglas Barbecue, just head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link. Okay, so we have to ask you the question, mm -hmm. Adrian. Yeah. Light meat or white meat or dark meat? Mm -hmm. Uh, both. I like. Uh, I would say dark meat because it's going to hold its tenderness better. Okay. Yes, for sure. Dark Although meat. I do have to agree <clears throat> with Ursula when she said mm -hmm. the the white meat with the gravy. Gravy. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I mean like yeah. Yeah. that meat should just snorkel over. Yeah. <laughs> what do you <laughs> think? Through the gravy. Though? All right. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. us know at SA Live Case at on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see a few of those answers later on in the show. Okay. This time of year, you of course have heard of the Polar Express, but we have something just as magical right here in San Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. Oh, our Jen Tobias Dusky is getting into the holiday spirit at the Duseum, checking out their new exhibit. Hey, Jen. Hello, yes, forget the Polar Express. It's all about the Duseum Express here at the Duseum, located off Broadway. From now until January 2nd, you can come out and enjoy this exhibit. And joining me now is Meredith Doby, the VP of Exhibits. This one is a great one for the holiday season. So why is this a one of a kind experience? Yeah, so this is Duseum Express, Tiny Trains and Trolleys. So it's a train exhibit, but it's also a weird and wacky landscape that's been created by six artists, six local artists here in San Antonio. And they've created this creative and highly unique landscape. Um, and of course it's the Duseum, so it's highly interactive. Kids can crawl under, they can pop up into little bubble pop-ups, um, <laughs> check out the train from that view. They can can also um, manipulate some camera scopes and kind of zoom in and yes. check out some details and really, um, really just explore and and discover. And in you, space. speaking of the six different artists, I love the mice over here. <laughs> just a little detail. I did stick my head in that bubble, and one of the mice is looking in the bubble at you from yeah, the kids' perspective. Yeah, yeah, no, there's some really great so details to really it. Really awesome. And how long do people have to come out here and take advantage and see this? So it will run through the holiday season. We're really hoping um, that it'll be your new uh, holiday tradition. 
Station um, to come out here and check out our train display. We'll probably have it each year. Um, so yes, it'll run through January 2nd. I love what you said. It's not the traditional way you envision, right? Like that holiday train yeah. uh, look. It's very colorful, very bright. So what can kids learn from the Disneyland Express and families? So um, I think what's really unique about this exhibit is it really gets you to slow down and look and observe. So you mentioned um, the, the mice there. So that is Wally World created by <laughs> artist Randall Rudd. And you're trying to find Wally the mouse. And then maybe you'll find some mice that fell off their skis and turned into a snowball or yeah. um, you know had all sorts of weird, wacky gags happening there. And now that you say that, I do see a huge snowball over there and all the fun little mice there. So what yeah. is your favorite thing, Meredith? Um, so I definitely think my favorite thing is just watching the kids crawl under Underneath, and then pop their little heads in and then look outside of the bubbles. Um, it's a great yeah. photo op and it's it's absolutely adorable. One thing I love here about the museum is that interactive aspect and there's cameras everywhere so that's what's really cool too. You can get the perspective from the train and joining me now also is Richard Kissel and he is the vice president of education because not only do you have this going on but the holiday season there's several other uh, events that people can take advantage of, right? Correct. We always have something new here happening at the museum on December 11th, for example. That Saturday, we're going to have our big day of play, Winter Wonderland. And all throughout the museum galleries, included free with admission, we're going to have activities. And those activities are actually going to be led by our six artists and residents. And so if you come nice. and see Museum Express, this is a great opportunity to come and interact with those artists. And during the holiday break, because kids will be out of school, you have some camps, right? We do. The week of Christmas and also the week of New Year's, we have a three-day and a four-day camp. Again, tied to the Museum Express and other science-based topics. And then lastly, on December 19th, we have a family workshop called Lights, Camera, Action, Ooh. where families can come to the museum, work with a couple of our museum educators, and within the span of 90 minutes, create a story, film it, edit it, and leave with a great memory. Wonderful and great memories to be had here. Thank you so much, Richard. If you can come out here and enjoy this, you have from now until January 2nd. And again, the, for more information, you can just give them a call 210-212-4453. Go online to the and you can get all the information you need. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Time for me to get one of these bubbles, guys. Mm -hmm. That looks so <laughs> Back cool, to you. right? I love the hat. Yes, <laughs> yes. The conductor hat looks beautiful on you as yes. always, Jen. <laughs> All right, still ahead on us we have DIY Thanksgiving projects that you can enjoy with the kids while they're off next week. More on that to come. Plus, we enjoy learning about another turkey cooking method. That's next on SA Live. Thanksgiving prep week continues with more turkey recipes. Yep, and Jenny Goikachea Marker, who's a food blogger and content creator of So Much Food, is going to show us the spatchcocking method of cooking a turkey. First of all, yes, welcome. welcome. Thank welcome. you for being Thank here. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate yes. it. Happy early Thanksgiving. Okay. Happy early Thanksgiving. So, all right, so what is spatchcocking for those who don't know? And we're going to, you're just going to explain what Mike is up to. Yes. So, <laughs> spatchcocking is basically a way of cooking poultry where you're going to take the backbone out, flip it over, break the breastbone, and it's going to lie flat. Now there are a lot of benefits to doing this, but first and foremost is everything is going to cook evenly. So you're not going to end up with any dry white meat or undercooked dark meat. Cooks a lot faster. So about a 14 pound bird is going to cook maybe in an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. And since it lies flat, you get plenty of space in your oven. And you oh, said yeah. spend the money and get the the yes. good kind, of, not just the shears that come with your yes. knife set. Yes. Specifically, these are, um, and you can pick them up at places, you know, William Sonoma, Sur La Table, places that kind of have a little bit more um, high-end tools, but you really are looking for nice, strong shears that are also going to cut through the skin. Obviously, the skin's okay. super slippery. You're really, man, making quick work of it. And <laughs> hey, probably not the first time he's yeah. done this. And, <laughs> save, and save the, the back one here, because that's yes. what we're going to use in the uh, second segment yes. coming up. So, Lots okay. of folks, uh, you know, make their turkey stock with the neck, here. but this is some Merry extra. Christmas. No. <laughs> you shouldn't have. Yeah. Okay, I so have an aunt I should give that to. So you're going to flip that over now. And you are going to just kind of splay those legs inward so that they're kind of like inward. This there way. you go. There Perfect. Okay. Like exactly. This. Yep. Ah, I've, got a, I've got a demonstration. Tuck the wing tips, and yes. then now you yep. should. There you go. That crunch is like exactly that. what you're looking for. There you go. You're so strong. 
<laughs> so you can that, see it's just laying good? a lot flatter is now. That, okay, do I have to crack it anymore? Is that pretty no, good? No, you're good. You're okay, good. I didn't know. Just stop beating up the bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like he's getting some enjoyment out of this. <laughs> there Stretch is a little You should see his cufflinks. <laughs> now. now. <laughs> it's dry brining, and you yes. said this is better than wet brining for a couple of reasons. Yes, I mean, you're going to get the same benefits that you would from wet brining, um, but you're not having to do the hassle of trying to find a huge container, lots of liquid, space in the fridge. You know, that just becomes a huge undertaking. And, so, and dry brining. Yeah, you're going right. to use all of that. So, again, we're aiming for about a tablespoon of salt per five pounds of meat. So, if you've got a 15 pound bird, you want to go um, three tablespoons of kosher salt specifically. If you're using finer salt, you're going to want to cut that number in half. I do have this recipe on my site and it kind of walks you through all of that, but you really want to get in there and try and pull some of the skin away from the meat and really, I mean, get in like all the nooks and crannies. Exactly. Oh, yes. Okay. All, all right. of that. Okay. Um, so the benefit to this is, and it's really interesting the way that it works. Dry brine or wet brine, normally it absorbs the liquid through osmosis. So what a dry brine is doing, the salt pulls the moisture out of the bird dissolves the salt and sugar that are on the outside and then reabsorbs it through osmosis. Oh my so gosh. it's like you're yeah. injecting it with yeah. a hyper concentrated flavor um, and really you want to do this at least two days before. Two to three days is best. You can do 24 hours but two to three days. And then okay. this would go in the oven for mm -hmm. what temperature, what time? So I do it for 400 degrees and right before I put it in the oven I really kind of smear it with a lot of room temperature butter. Okay. Really just and then it's going to rest on a bed of veggies. So onions, carrots, celery, some fresh herbs and then the butter again is going to help those you know veggies saute up and then you're going to get those nice pan drippings right, that are going to go into our gravy. Fiona has right there. Yes, exactly. And carving it. Ready? I'm yeah. going to lift it up, right? Yeah. Go, okay. go, go, go. There, there you okay. go. Exactly. Right. And so also spashcocking the bird really allows you to carve so much easier. That was so easy. Right? Isn't that always <laughs> you the hardest the part? Because the thigh bone has been broken away. Exactly. It. So okay. it's so much easier to get in between those joints where really the legs are almost the hardest, you know, to get off the bird and keep them in one piece. And this then opens up, makes more room to get the breast off of the, exactly. the breast bone right there. Yes. So. Okay. Am I going to go down the right, right down here? Yeah, so you watch don't have to go. I, 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 I'm, I'm watching it. You're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So you just want to get as close as you can to the breastbone, and you're using a flexible knife, which really helps you get in there and mm -hmm. cut things a lot easier. So do I push? Do I push? Do I push? And then do you just cut along the bone? And, exactly. And, and then kind of got it, underneath. Got it, got it, so got it. so okay. imagine that you're pulling it away from the ribs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're really just creating that line and cut along the breastbone and then kind of outwards. Okay. And then you would take that out and then slice it against the mm -hmm. grain. We're all yep. set to go there. Exactly. And then, and we're running a little bit short here, but what we're going to do is display it. And then coming up a little bit later on, we are going to show you how to take what the uh, what we made out of the backbone here and some of the drippings and make gravy. Yes, best part, let's be honest. No lumps. <laughs> None. Right. None. If you like no more, more information on <laughs> Jenny Goikochea Marker and her <laughs> So much food recipes. Head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we have provided a link. Thank you so very much. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And like we mentioned, stick around because Jenny is going to show us how to make turkey gravy out of that bird. And crafts, cocktails, and charcuterie, Mike. Yay. Yes, they're on the way. Adina Anderson shows us Thanksgiving DIY projects. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, we're enjoying lots of turkey on today's show, but something else you should consider making on Thanksgiving is your table setting. And we are very thankful, mm -hmm. as it says right there, to have Adina Anderson, owner of Creative Lifestyles with Adina, to help us with some creative Thanksgiving yes. table yes. settings right now. Fun yes. stuff, fun, yep. easy, and inexpensive. So the first thing Mike has is our twine pumpkin here. And it's really simple. You just tie the twine around your hand about 10 times, tie it off, and you make about six of these. And then you take your hot glue gun. Is it not coming out? No, it didn't. Pu it didn't push the end. Up. Push the end in. It's not even hot, really. Oh, oh no. no. Uh -oh. Okay, okay, well, if your okay. hot glue gun is hot, in theory, 
what you're going to do is you would glue, glue him all around, of these around yes. here like this, <laughs> right? And you have a finished one in front of you that you can show. And you do six of those around. And then you can make them as your place setting, or you can just have them as decoration. Add some white pumpkins and some orange pumpkins. Yes. And add your little table runner there, which is just your burlap, which is in front of you. You can get that at any craft store. And I use the deco art paint markers that you can write on it. Or you could lay it out and have all your guests write what they're thankful on it for. This is a different kind of a burlap. It's not like burlap sack burlap. It's got a backing It's got the on backing it, like. on it so that if it gets wet, it won't hurt it. Or you can ah. rip the backing off if you want it to be the flexible kind. Okay. And so, Fiona, you, you're making the glitter leaf that goes with the pumpkin. And all you, I just had some scrapbook paper and I traced out some leaves. It actually, I, I think, love says Christmas, this. but okay. yeah, <laughs> just but whatever I mean, you want to do. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty, season. right? Okay. Yes. And then you're just going to paint the decoupage around the edges mm -hmm. and then add glitter to it. And don't be shy with your decoupage and don't be shy with your glitter. <laughs> I glitify everything. <laughs> so you just kind of trace yes, around. Yes, yes. And while you're finishing that up, mm -hmm. Mike, on that thankful sign, that was a little kit that I bought on Amazon or Michaels or something. And it already comes pre-cut and had the holes in it. And it comes with the twine. And I just traced out the letters to say thankful. And I painted them with the deco art paint markers in a different color. And then mm -hmm. you can just hang it on the wall. You could write happy Thanksgiving. It came with like 50 of them in there. So you could really have fun with it. Oh, just un undo the litter. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cute. Cool <laughs> I was, just, I was gonna sprinkle it out. I didn't want to pour it. It's gonna I'm like, be so be much shy. of it. Okay. That could go on the table. That could go over yes. the, the doorway, the archway, archway exactly. going into the dining room. Exactly. You like could that. you could definitely use it for whatever you want. And while Fiona's finishing that up, I have a yummy cocktail here for you. Don't mind if I do. Yes. That's this is why. Going, that's no. why I didn't. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with glitifying the world, right? <laughs> and so, Mike, you have the cocktail finished in front of you, but this is the Texas Ranger Coconut Pecan. It's uh, whiskey. It's made here in San Antonio, and I'm just going to do my four count. You just put about an ounce and a half of your whiskey in there, and then you just add ginger ale. Now, you could add pumpkins. I added brown sugar around the edge. It is so yummy. That's good stuff. It is so good. You would never think like a coconut with whiskey butter. Ooh. Right? It's good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and you. you can, Cheers. Well, yeah. yes. Here, Fiona, I have one for you. I'm still Fiona. wrestling with the deck. With, hold on. Fiona, with the Mod you're, you're doing a great job. I, I'm there, there, with there. my cocktail watching All you right. here. So. And Mike, in front of you is the charcuterie board. And oh. my favorite thing I was telling you is the chocolate <laughs> with the blue cheese. And Fiona, you're going to do our cornucopia place setting. Okay. But add a little honey to your blue cheese, and it's like a little dark chocolate nacho. It is amazing. If you don't like blue cheese, you will absolutely love this. And you've got the sugar cone here. You fill it up with, I had leftover Halloween candy or some fall caramels. Tie it off. What a great and look. way to get rid of your leftover Halloween I candy. Saving from yourself. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> look, look what I did for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. That's okay. exactly it. Yes. <laughs> did you like it? Oh, it was wow. good, right? I never knew this about you. Your favorite hobby is drinking coffee and writing? Oh, yes. What yes. do you write about? Oh, everything. Well, mo mostly my travels, because mm -hmm. I, you know, I traveled quite a bit, you know, a couple years ago. Um, and I also write about crafts and different things like that. And then I have the blog. So, um, yeah, I love writing and drink. I love coffee. I'll do anything with coffee, really. <laughs> Okay. Or with this coconut flavored whiskey too. Yes, definitely. That would go really good in coffee, seriously. <laughs> it would. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that. That would be really yummy yeah. in coffee. I'm going to definitely have to tell you that. Fiona, you're doing your little turkey here. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, move, I'm, move, I'm moving along. You just enjoy your circuitry <laughs> and your drink, okay? You're doing a great job. You keep it up there. This yeah. is what happens, right? <laughs> Everybody else hustle. enjoys everything, and there's one person doing all the stuff, right? <laughs> Give Fiona decoupage and some glitter, and she's going to stay occupied for hours. That's so. right. <laughs> If you would like more information on creative lifestyles with Adina and ways to keep Fiona occupied, just go to SALive.com and click it on the ad. It works for me, it'll work for your kids. That's oh, right. No. <laughs> okay, later on in this show, hey, Adina's going to be back with more ways to keep Fiona occupied. And she's going to show us Thanksgiving themed games and treats that your kids and Fiona will love. And up next, we are getting the most out of our Thanksgiving turkey by creating a gravy to pair with it. That's just gravy. Thanksgiving 
prep league continues and we are utilizing the spatchcock turkey we made earlier in the show. And once again, Jenny Gorkachea Marker, food blogger of So Much Food is here and we are now making the gravy and just to kind of recap, cut the backbone out, mm -hmm. splayed it out, it cooks much more evenly, easier to carve up yep, and display absolutely. like this. And you saved the backbone and made stock out of it, right? Yes, so you're definitely going to want to hang on to that neck and the giblets that come inside of your turkey and then you've got this extra like powerhouse full of you know all the good bones and meat and fat on there so you're going to put that in a little stock pot and I just like to throw in like whatever veggies I have on hand so you know we roasted it on a bed of onions carrot celery so I used ends of onions bits of carrot celery a um, couple bay leaves and some peppercorns and the goal really is to start with about three quarts of water and you really want to reduce that down to three or four cups okay, and so that's concentrate exactly concentrates pulls all the collagen out of the bone so you've got this really nice rich turkey stock that's going to blow you know anything that you can get in a box out of the water okay, okay. and we start off with just a, the simple roux there flour yep. and then you use some of the drippings yes. out of the pan first of all exactly so we're going to add the drippings in first specifically because there's still some fat in there so we want that to get worked into the flour um, and then you just want to give that a whisk Okay. And then to that, once we've got that all incorporated and it's starting to thicken up, you'll just yes. slowly stream in that turkey stock. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Hold well, on. I know. <laughs> really double fisting over here. I know. Okay. There you go. And you love to roller skate, play golf, rescue dogs, and <laughs> wow. pretty uh, famous. Too, on, too many pretty, dogs. <laughs> pretty famous on TV also. Right. I don't yes, know about, tell us I don't about, know about that. Famous. Oh man. What? Um, so, we haven't been on the Food Network, <laughs> no. but you have. So, you know, back when I was in San Diego, um, I got approached to come on Cutthroat Kitchen, which is a super popular show on the Food Network um, with Alton Brown, and did that three times. So that was, you know, super fun. and. Films in LA, so you know, got to go up there. They put me up in a nice spot, and man, it was just the wildest couple of days of filming. I mean, everything that they can get thrown at you, it's thrown at expected. you. Yeah, hundred percent. And it really is I mean, kind of cutthroat too. There's a lot of sabotaging going on, and you know, just keeps things wild and interesting. Well, I mean, it's like you know, yes, here we go. You have thirty seconds. We've released raccoons in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and also you're cooking with you a know, screwdriver. You've got one hand tied behind your back. Right. Like you're blindfolded. Make us yeah. world peace. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Hundred percent. That's yeah. how. It it was, um, but man, super fun. And then from San Diego, you moved here, been here about uh, four years or so. Yes. Your husband, yes. and give a shout out to him. He is in the Navy, serving yes, out there he at is. Fort, yes, uh, he Fort is. Sam. Yes, he has been here for about four years. Okay, and has some really good turkey dinners to come home to, right? Yeah, I will say he eats pretty well. And. Yes, I had to sample after we uh, carved <laughs> this up here. And how was it? And, well, the, the rub that you use, you use a dry uh, rub, or mm -hmm. excuse me, a dry brine, uh, brine, brine yes. pardon me. And boy, the flavors in that, because you use salt, brown sugar. Yeah, a little what bit else? of brown sugar, some uh, rub sage, and then there's uh, ground thyme in there, marjoram, white pepper, which is the secret trick, and then a little bit of black pepper. Okay. So again, I know we mentioned this earlier, uh, a tablespoon of salt for every five pounds of meat. And then really you can kind of customize those flavors, you know, to your taste um, and kind of throw in whatever you like. All right. And of course, folks can find your recipes on your food blog, right? Yep. So much food um, And I've got everything. I mean, all kinds of Thanksgiving sides, cocktails, desserts, everything you need to know about, you know, picking the right turkey, spash cocking it, um, and then all the recipes to go with it. All right. Mike is a happy man right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for more information. On Jenny and her so much food recipes, head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link. Delicious. Thank you guys. And Adina Anderson is back with more Thanksgiving fun. And we make and play Turkey Day themed games and make Mike wear these amazing glasses to keep the help keep the kids entertained while you cook. This is entertaining for us. I don't know about anybody else. This is greatness. <laughs> All right, flu season is here. So how much do you know about the flu? Enough to know, you, well, you don't want to get it, right? Well, here to give us a 101 on flu season and help your family stay safe is Dr. James Gaspard, primary care provider with Conviva Care Center. Welcome, welcome, thanks for being here. Hey, Fiona, how are you today? Go doing well, don't have the flu. Very, that's already a step in the right direction, right? But that for, is correct. <laughs> but, but for folks out there, you know, how can someone catch the flu and how many people are affected every season? Well, as you know, flu is an aerosolized virus, okay? It's droplets in the air, it's things we touch, so contaminated surfaces like tabletops and desks and things like that, can you can pick up the virus from there. 
about, uh, according to CDC in 2019, about 30 million Americans were actually affected by the flu. We had 400,000 hospitalizations and 30,000 deaths. Wow. All related to the flu. And speaking of the flu, the symptoms, I mean, how do you know it's the flu? Because sometimes you may think it's something else, right? Oh, there are a lot of something else is that we got to think about today, okay? Especially in Texas at this time of the year, you know, the flu season is October through March, okay? It's although it's here year round, now it's, you know, mountain cedar, could it be the common cold? Is it the flu? So the flu is, you know, symptoms like fever, headache, body aches, you know, chills, tiredness, you know, just not feeling well. And so there are lots of things that say this could be the flu. And so again, uh, it's the season, we got to worry about it. And so how can folks, you know, prevent catching it? Well, again, there are simple things we all can do. First of all, if you know someone's ill, avoid being in contact with that person. You know, wash your hands, wear a mask, okay? And the most important thing that people can do every year around this time is get a flu shot. They're safe and effective. And when they get that flu shot, make sure to get it early because it can take a week or two, right? Before that is correct. And I tell my patients, you know, when flu season's coming around, summer's going into fall, when those signs go up, you know, you're driving down the road, you see the little pharmacy pop-up sign say, flu shots are here, it's time to pull in and get one of those. All right. And what should we know about getting that flu shot? You get the flu shot, you know, and you know, it's a shot. and. I recommend, you, you may feel bad for a couple of days, but getting the shot actually allows you to not get the illness, which is probably more longer than having the actual illness from the shot or side effects. So what else should folks know or well, be aware of? Well, if you of? get the flu, you know, my suggestion is, first of all, rest, right. okay? Second of all, take care of yourself and take care of someone else. Stay at home, don't go to work, okay? Hydrate, if you have any questions, call your doctor, okay? Let's give you some advice. There are a number of over-the-counter medicines that you can take to help you recover. Usually people are better within three to seven days. If it lasts longer than that, you certainly need to be worried because there are complications we can get related to the flu like sinusitis or pneumonia. And so I think it's wise if it's lasting longer than a week, you need to contact someone. All right, Dr. James Gaspard, thank you so much. For more information on Conviva Care Center, just call 210-796-6044, that's 796-6044, or visit the website meetconviva.com. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Tomorrow on SA Live, it's our final day of Thanksgiving prep week. So what do you do with all that leftover turkey? We have delicious solution for you from a local restaurant. Plus, we have a bakery get creative by making new desserts out of Thanksgiving sides and sweets. No food goes uneaten here. This is what we do. All that and more tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. Never miss an episode of SA Live. Watch live or when you want on the KSAT TV app on these devices. SA Live streaming for free on KSAT TV. Earlier, we asked you with Thanksgiving dinner coming up, all right, white meat or dark meat? And they say, oh, white meat, can't complain. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, turkey white meat is, but I will eat some of the dark meat. Yeah, it's, it's nice with a little and bit of It's got too. more yeah. moisture, right? Yes, the it dark does. Meat? More okay. flavor, too, I think. Oh, the turkey leg from Lisa Ann. White meat with some gravy. Yeah, with the gravy. That, that goes better with the gravy, I think. Mm -hmm. Swimming in it. Tom says, have to go with white meat, can't complain. Yet again. <laughs> and a bit of both gravy and a side of stuffing, wild rice, mashed potatoes, and don't forget the yams over there. Oh, yeah, smothering gravy. That was yeah. a so smothering gravy, but I, dirty I think is with, dirty. The left, with the leftovers, though, if you're going to make a sandwich, I think the white meat goes better. Could then you put the cranberry sauce on it, a little bit of uh, Swiss cheese, maybe some of the stuffing on there, and then you're all set to go. And you put that in uh, like gr a griddle or something. That's mm -hmm. good. And I think it was better with the white meat. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. More than you had wanted me to ask. Well, it's but, okay. Yeah. But speaking, yeah. so, of speaking of leftovers, guess what's tomorrow? Guess what? We have a restaurant here tomorrow. Way to prompt me into doing the tomatoes. <laughs> they I forgot about them. Turkey leftover recipes, and boy, are they going to be good. Yes. And we also have a bakery get creative by making new desserts out of Thanksgiving sides and dish uh, and sweets. Oh my gosh. I know. And you're going to miss it all. I tomorrow. know. Y'all have fun. <laughs>